Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. I'm Bakhtawar, I'm a Pakistani booktuber and I do book cast and book reviews and things like that. Today we're discussing Moth Smoke by Mohsin Hamid. This is an immensely popular book, I'm sure most people have heard of it. And um, I think especially for my generation and younger, it's been kind of the gateway into reading more Pakistani fiction written in English, more or less. Although not for me though, because I read Babsi Sidwa and Kamla Shamsi first, but for most people. So Moth Smoke is the story of this 29-year-old guy named Dara Shiko. Yes. Uh, who has just lost his job in Lahore, a job that he hated anyway, and then he sort of goes broke, starts selling drugs, gets involved with his best friend's wife, and also becomes a heroin addict. So pretty much, you know, it's, it's a downfall from the beginning. Now this blurb may seem like you know, the novel is really depressing or something, but Mot Smoke is anything but depressing. You know, I read it 12 years ago, then I read it recently to do this review. And, you know, on many occasions in my life, you know, something very small will often remind me of a scene from Mot Smoke. So it's, some, uh, so it's a book which stays with you in some form over the years because of, you know, it's, if it's imagery really. If, you know, I've over the years thought that Mot Smoke is, it kind of somehow transcends being just a novel. It's more like a living creature that, you know, thinks and feels endless amounts of pain and humiliation. So, uh, you know, a creature which has heightened sensory perception. That's what I felt. And the description kind of, everything resonates when you read it. You know, the, the dirt and smoke and grime of the city, the moths sticking on the walls, the scratching of the empty wallet, the endless array of snobbish, drunken, rich people. This roller coaster that Dara Shika is on, it kind of, you can't be indifferent to it. You're In my mind, I found three primary metaphors or allegories, if you will. I mean, I mean, there were probably more, but three main ones that I picked up. First, you have the backdrop of the nuclear test that took part in Pakistan in 1998. So, you know, they sort of spout this atmosphere of fear and uncertainty, which aligns itself perfectly, in fact, with, you know, Darashika's life because he's in this speedily declining position. Then there's also a parallel interplay of the ancient Mughal story of, you know, Aurangzeb and Darashiko, who were both the sons of Shah Jahan. And, you know, they were wresting control of the throne and Aurangzeb triumphs, which again is what happens in this story as well. So it's kind of like running a parallel because all the characters are named the same and, and even the city is the same because Lahore was a Mughal stronghold many centuries ago. And then finally, you have the most powerful metaphor of all, the moth. And although initially, um, I'll be honest with you, when, uh, when I saw the title and stuff, when I thought that the moth was kind of, you know, the way um, Thomas Harris is it, who uses it in Silence of the Lambs, he also uses sort of the symbol and the physical characteristics of a moth to describe this person's mentality. Well, that, well that's a topic for another day. But in this book, the moth, obviously, it, the first understanding of the metaphor is, you know, sort of being helplessly entranced by something and not being able to stop yourself and kind of like a moth drawn to a flame. And then obviously the moth uh, is incinerated and ends up into a small puff of smoke if you're looking really closely. And that obviously is symbolic for, you know, Darashika's relationship with his best friend's wife, because again, it's the same, th same analogy. The second understanding that I took was that Darashika feels that if one cannot reach the pinnacle of one's potential really, maybe it's better to be destroyed entirely because Darashika is this really, you know, he's this really smart guy. I mean, he was a PhD student, but he kind of, it's a degree he abandons because he feels he'll never make any money in academics and he kind of gets this low-end bank job simply because of the money, because which con contextually seems to fit because, you know, he has all of these rich friends. He went to a really good school, um, as somebody's charity project. So obviously he grew up without money but had access to all of these really rich people. But he's smarter than they are, except they end up with all the privilege and they end up with the, you know, with the foreign admissions and you know, like years abroad and they end up with all the perks and everything. Well, he ends up with nothing despite the fact that he had better grades and everything. And that kind of creates a justifiable resentment in him which makes him self-destructive and is part of the reason why he turns into drugs, I think. But also the moths seem to signify a kind of feeling of entrapment. You know, uh, there's scenes, very vivid scenes in the book in which, you know, uh, you, like things are described as, you know, he's sitting in a lonely room, he's just endlessly smoking hash, the moths are sticking to the walls, the electricity has been gone for a long time. And, and then the fact that the electricity has been gone, he kind of, he, remem he remembers his mother who used to sleep on the roof because they had no air conditioning and then she was killed by a stray bullet. And then he, he thinks that the air conditioner 
is the reason that his mother was killed, the, the absence of the air conditioner. And now that he's broke and can't afford one, it's kind of like he's reliving his mother's death in some way. Now then, um, as a reader, I felt on more than one occasion, you wonder if the actions of the characters and the decisions they take, is it because a change has come over them, or they've developed in some way, or is it because it's, it's revelatory of who they were all along? And lots of things are posed as a revelation. Um, Oren Zave, again, um, Darushika's best friend, uh, well, best friend, then later arch enemy. Uh, he kills this boy on a bike with his pajero and runs him over, doesn't even stop to take him to the hospital and when he's confronted he's kind of dismissive like that boy's child, like, like the child's life didn't matter. And you see this look come across Darushika's face as if he's, you know, this person that he's known his whole life as if he's looking at him for the first time. So, so yeah, that's pretty much it, folks. I tried to keep this review really spoiler-free because, you know, people that haven't read it, I want you to read it. I don't want to tell you too many plot twists or anything. But definitely, if you haven't read it, definitely, definitely read it. And um, if you want me to review any of Mohsen Hamid's other books, I have read all of them, uh, mostly because of, you know, peer pressure. But um, I, I will consider making videos on them. Please uh, take care of yourself, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.